Hello, this is David Leroy and in this slide presentation I'll be going over the Levine's test for homogeneity of variance and I'll be talking a little bit about the logic behind that test. You're probably familiar with using several statistical tests that are from the family of the general linear model. Uh, these would include t-tests uh, and analysis of variance. And once you've mastered the use of some of these statistical techniques, uh, there are some issues and things you need to be aware about uh, when you're performing those tests. And one thing that people run into uh, after mastering the tests is grappling with issues to, uh, around parametric assumptions. And these are assumptions that need to be met before tests like t-tests and analysis of variance can really be conducted. Now there's a number of these uh, parametric assumptions that I would like to invite you to uh, go looking for and study, uh, but the one I'm going to focus on uh, in this short slide series is called the Levine's test for homogeneity of variance. So what does it mean? Well, it means that the averages you want to compare in a study when you're making a statistical comparison uh, should come from samples that have roughly the same uh, variance. And the assumption here of homogeneity of variance is equal variances across the different samples that you want to compare. So let's take a look uh, at these sketches of a couple of normal distributions. Uh, and one thing that should be uh, fairly obvious is that the variances of these distributions look rather similar. Okay, so We've collected data from two different samples. One has given us an average uh, one. One has given us a, a second average. Uh, when we look at the distributions of all of the numbers contributing to those averages, and we plot them in this uh, normal distribution, uh, we see that the distributions are roughly the same. And that's called eyeballing the data. And it's really good to be able to look at your data and think, you know what, I have fairly equal distributions here. It might be the case that you've collected uh, two different samples and produced uh, two different means. Um, but these samples come from distributions that are different and ones that have different amounts of variance. So you can see uh, the first mean, uh, x bar 1. Um, has a restricted uh, variance. It's quite uh, close, uh, the samples, to the, uh, the average. Whereas the second stamp sample, mean 2, uh, you can see that the scores contributing to the average are, are much more spread out. And so this would tell us that we might have a, an issue to do with um, the variances of these samples being different. In which case, if they're different, we haven't met our parametric assumption and that we would may then need to contemplate doing a different type of statistical test. So what's the logic of the Levine's test? Well it's actually quite simple. It's just a test that tells us whether the variances in two or more samples are close enough to each other that they should be considered the same. And if they're close to each other and there's not really much of a difference, and we should consider them to be equivalent, uh, then we have not violated a parametric assumption and that it may be uh, appropriate to continue on to conduct uh, t-tests and various analyses of variance. It's important to be able to explain the logic behind some of these tests in your own words and have uh, an understanding about what's going on uh, behind the scenes, if you like. It's going to be pretty simple for you to learn uh, in SPSS, just to use the drop-down menus, uh, to click on the Levine's uh, check uh, box and then run the analysis. You will get um, output data that includes, includes a Levine statistic. Uh, 
Um, but what I want you to pick up from uh, these PowerPoint slides is, is what's happening you know, underneath that. What is the underlying um, calculations that are being done? So let's take a hypothetical example. Uh, imagine that you want to compare memory performance with uh, two groups of participants in a study that you're conducting. Uh, half of the participants are in a group of children and the other half of participants are in a group of adults. Um, you expose everybody uh, who's participating in your study to a list of 50 words. Uh, you wait for a few minutes and then you get them to write down all of the words that they can remember. And your question is, is there a difference in the number of words that children can remember versus that which adults can remember? Now before you can go and test that uh, hypothesis, perhaps with a t-test or a one-factor analysis of variance, you will need to test whether the assumption of homogeneity of variance has been met. Let's take a closer look at some data. This data is laid out in a format that you would expect to find it if you were entering it into a computer program like SPSS. On the left hand side we've got um, a grouping variable so you can see uh, that every row represents the data of a participant that's been included in the study. Um, we've got a number of children uh, in the study. We've got a number of adults that have all had their memory tested. Uh, we've recorded how many words that both the children and adults could remember. And then we've gone on to calculate the group mean. And so what we can see here is that on average, children are recalling 15.1 pieces of information. And adults are recalling 21.8 pieces of information, words that are in the list. Now, what the Levine's test wants to do is it wants to be able to see if the variance in each of these groups, children versus adults, is the same or if it's different. And what the Levine's test does is it goes and subtracts every single score provided by a participant from the score that represents the group mean. So in the top row where we have a child who's produced a memory score of 15, um, if we were to subtract the group mean from that score we would end up with minus one. And you can see in the third column of numbers, that the memory score minus the group score has been depicted. And this needs to be done for every participant in the study, going through them all, taking their memory score and subtract subtracting the score of their group. And what you'll see is that the resulting uh, residuals are both positive and negative. And this doesn't really help us mathematically so much because positives and negatives tend to cancel each other out. Uh, what the Levine's test does is it simply goes about ignoring the uh, whether the number is positive or negative. And you can see in the last column what the Levine's test is going to analyze. It just takes those differences that it calculated and knocks off all of the negatives. So we just end up with an absolute difference from the mean. So it doesn't matter whether a particular memory score was above the mean or below the mean. We just want to know how far it was from the mean, irrespective of whether it was higher or lower. Now, if we were to put those numbers into uh, SPSS, um, we would choose to do a one-way analysis of variance with the grouping variable being uh, children versus adults. And if we were to do that and look at the memory scores, what we would find is a significant difference. And you can see here that that has been told to us uh, by the F 
of 7.182 with a significance or alpha level of less than 0.05. And if we have a look at the table of means here in the top right hand corner, what it's saying is that the average memory score of 15.1 for children is significantly lower than the memory score of 21.8 for adults. Now, the question is, do we have homogeneity of variance? What about all of the differences from those means of the individual scores? Well, the Levine's test is essentially an analysis of variance that's done on this last column of numbers here. The grouping variable is going to be children versus adults, but now we're just going to do an analysis of variance to see if the differences from the mean irrespective of the direction are the same or different between groups. And when we calculate the Levine's test, there's a couple of ways that we can do that. Uh, we can calculate our own analysis of variance and produce our own F statistic, which would be 1.724 with a p-value of 0.20 of 0.206. We can also run the analysis of variance through the general linear model tab on SPSS and just click the Levine's test uh, in one of the check boxes and it will produce it automatically for you. The important thing to do uh, or to notice is that um, the Levine's test is effectively just an analysis of variance on the variance that you have. And so in some ways it's quite an elegant and simple test to be able to give you an indication of whether you have homogeneity of variance across groups. Now there are some things to think about and there's probably some unanswered questions in your mind. Why, for example, do we even have to have equal variances in groups before we conduct tests from the family of general linear model? Well that's a good question for you to ponder and I would invite you to do some reading around that to find uh, concrete points as well as anything that you think may just be a little bit arbitrary about the assumption. Here are some things that you might want to consider uh, when you're forming your view about the usefulness of a statistical test like this. First of all, what conclusions can be drawn from a non-significant result? When we say we have equal variances between two groups and we're basing that upon the result of a Levine's test, what we've obtained effectively is a non-significant result. If the test between the different variances in the different groups was significant, we'd end up with a significant difference between the two groups and therefore conclude that we don't have homogeneity of variance. But all too often we're told uh, in psychology and science to be careful about non-significant results. Uh, because they can be affected by a number of different things, for example, the size of the sample that you're um, using and so forth. It's also important to be uh, aware that the parametric assumptions are ones that are used throughout the social sciences. And it's useful to think about how this applies uh, to psychology in particular. Should we expect to find homogeneity of variances in all of the psychology samples that we want to look about? And if you think about the groups that we tested in the example, well, between children and adults, it might be that it's perfectly normal to find more variation amongst children than you would adults. And then this would rule out the use of a t-test or analysis of variance to continue uh, looking at the phenomena that you're interested in. It is the case in psychology that people brush over many of these parametric uh, assumptions. Um, and it is noteworthy that when we read psychology articles, quite often you don't see tests of parametric assumptions included because all too often uh, 
In many psychology studies, these assumptions have been violated. Um, so while it's important to be you know, aware of the parametric assumptions, it's also, to have, it's also important to have a good understanding of what they're really trying to do and what some exceptions uh, that might exist within psychology that might give you uh, pause to think a little bit more about the data that you're collecting or the data that you're wanting to analyze.